Woo, at least we got the stingray back after the hurricane. She floated and stayed on the tra trailer. Luckily, it was strapped because it had the rear straps. It's a roller trailer. I always keep back straps in case the front one was to break. It'll roll off onto the ground or the loading ramp. So I'm about to drop a battery in and see if we can fire her up. Chad over there spraying the air hose and Jasper did not like it. That's one of those little things that's been since he was a pup. It started out as a game and now I don't know if he likes it anymore or not. So anyway, hooking up the battery back here in Stingray and here goes one of the big issues with the flooded vehicles. This was up on here covering it, but I could see all this. On the back side here where it makes the connection for the trim solenoids and this of course was hooked straight to the battery and uh, that wire i've wiggled it a couple times it was like a strand or two holding it now it all rusted through so i've got a couple of these laying around in there i'm going to switch this out and cut the wire backwards good put a new end but that's the kind of stuff you got to watch out for i still don't even know if the pump is going to be any good or not it's somewhat sealed, but when it's submerged for five days like it was, anything can happen. It could be in there. So let me get her hooked up, see if she'll at least fire up. Probably have to change. Well, the starter wire over there, yeah, was hooked to the positive. It was hooked up. I don't have a kill switch in this one. All right, let's see. Just like I found this one laying down in here. That's why I say don't pay attention to all the wires. This is just where I ripped the batteries out and whatever, it don't really matter. But again, these just fell right off because, well, they were hot, hooked up to the battery, but I don't think it popped fuses, obviously. Um, the butt connectors, that's the other thing about using marine grade butt connectors. These are just a cheapies from Harbor Freight or somewhere. And they do good because I'm, I'm not really, well, I do go in salt water a lot and they were still good until she got submerged for five days, which this in here was rainwater mainly, but it was up to this level here where the battery and the wiring and everything, alternator, all that, the, that was for the plug light, one of those fuses, but anyway, it fried it. Well, I hit the trim and it's working up and down, surprisingly. Dad's over there working on the mower for me. So I'm gonna turn on some water and see if she'll fire. Got Dad flipping on the water. We're about to try out the stingray, y'all. Woo! First time after Hurricane Ian, I lost my RV and my Harley. Let's see. This was the best condition, even though I thought it floated away and thought I'd never see it again. It had to be out in the street in front of me. So we're going to fire her up and see what happens. Hope for the best. It's good. Ah. Ooh. I really do believe it's just a starter. I hope it's just a starter. It was submerged. The motor, I don't think it got water inside it. So I guess I'll have to mess with the starter and see what we can do with her. Oh, yeah, I got down in here to check. That starter is toast. Oh, my God. I didn't even drop the panel to look at it. But now that I'm looking at it, I knew she'd be bad. But, all right, so let's get another starter. I got one in there in the shop. So I come in to change the starter, and this is the main wire. <laughs> Just fell right off. I... You know, it was under the boot here, and as soon as I touched it, boot come right off. The main stud itself's all wiggly, screwed. Uh, these two, they're your hot going back in. This one's to the alternator, that one's powering everything. And inside the boat there, and as soon as I touched the end, it just boop, right off as soon as I. So, like I say, south flooded salvage type vehicles and boats, bikes, anything. I can tell the starter wires the same way on my Harley. It's, it, I can see how fried it is, but when they're hooked up to the battery is really when it does it. 
If I would have had a kill switch in here and had it turned off or unhooked a negative, it wouldn't have did that. But uh, anyway, the one for the little cylinder, at least it looks good. I just had to clean it up a little with the wire wheel. But that's good because it didn't have juice gone to it, you know, it ain't like the ignition switch was turned. So you got to check your wiring. What is it, Jasper? Say, boy. What is it, Jasper? All right, so me and Jasper have been out here working on the Stingray again today. I had to come back to it. It's been a minute since we've been out here messing with it. So I'm picking the video back up. It's been a week and a half, two weeks. I don't know. Bigger, better stuff come along. Sorry, I don't mean that, Stingray. You know I love you. But uh, I do have the boat, so thank God. And I just went ahead and threw the old starter back on it. I mean, like, whoosh, threw it at it. Boom. And I had to redo some of my ends. The starter, actually, I cleaned up the connections uh, on the solenoid. Jumped it in there on the floor of the shop with some jumper cables on the battery. And it was doing fine. So I'm not going to leave it on there for good because it will wind up leaving me eventually stranded. But for right now, I just want to hear the boat crank up again. It's nearing the end of October here in South Carolina. It's starting to get cool. Tonight's supposed to be down 31. Tomorrow's supposed to be 31. I just don't want a chance that I need to get the... It's got brackish water mix in it anyway, so I want to get all that out before it sits for a while. And uh, what is it, Jasper? But we've been busy. Bigger, better things. Thank God, everybody, you have heard. I was in the... Uh, or my stuff was in the Hurricane Ian. And I lost my RV. Well... Thank you, Jesus. We wound up getting a new one through uh, Safeco Insurance. Was like, and I, it's not brand new. But anyway, they really did us right. Took care of us on the insurance. I'll make a whole another video on that because uh, I just love that <laughs> Columbus. It's uh, made by Palomino, which was bought out by Forest River, and Forest River is one of my favorites because that's even who the Cedar Creek was through. But anyway. So I got the hose hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and flip on some water, climb up in there, and see if she will fire. I replaced a couple ends on the wire, like for the alternator. It uh, charges the battery, and then the one that feeds back through, um, that feeds to the ignition and stuff like that. And uh, must be a kink in the hose. Oh, uh, yeah. So anyway... We'll get some water. Let me climb up in there. And she should fire. Battery's hooked up and everything's hot. Yeah, I guess I should have mentioned that is a Palomino 2013 Columbus. Like 32 foot, I believe. It's a 320 or something like that. So if you are interested in seeing a beautiful fifth wheel, go ahead and check out my other video that I'll be posting on that real soon. Because it is decked out inside. Alright, I didn't want to undo the tarp all the way off. I got the back half opened up where I was working on it. Let's see what she does. Just trying to see if I hear some fuel squirt. I think I do now. Definitely didn't, wasn't like it was hydrolocked or nothing. There we go! The Stingray's alive! don't know. I've had her about 16 years and I didn't want to lose it to Hurricane Ian because it was down there as you've already heard I'm sure. I can't help myself. I'm excited. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's back y'all. She is back. Now I, I need to do a few things to it and also again stick around for the videos because I'll be now that might be a while before I get around to work on this one. I've got other bigger, better things going on. We're waiting on the RV park down there, a little Charlie RV to open up to where we can take the fifth wheel back down, have it all set up, and who knows? Maybe I'll take the Stingray back down. Oh yes. All right, I'll let it run for a couple of minutes and get all that brackish water and stuff flushed out. Boy, that sounds good. That's a good sound. I love hearing that. I love hearing that. Oh, yeah. She's perfect. 
<laughs> anyway, I got really lucky. I'll be able to do redo a few things. The floor got a little soft. I'm gonna have to redo that. So there'll be plenty of videos and all that good stuff. You can follow along and see its progress. Once again, this will be like the second time I've redone the whole boat. But I won't have to do anything really to the motor, it don't sound like. Alright. Anyway, I let it run for a few more minutes and then I'm going to do a winterization. So stick around, check out that one. It'll be uh, <laughs> winterizing your Mer Cruiser inboard, outboard, stern drive. Then again, it's only been running a minute. Well, dang on. Come on, baby. I need fuel injection. Woo. Hey, she's alive. That's all that matters. We'll get her fixed up again. See, that's weird. It's idle a little high now. And if you just crack the throttle like that, you fire right up. But it's not warmed up. Like I said, once it warms up, then it'll usually fire 